Chinese alchemy is an ancient Chinese scientific and technological approach to alchemy, a part of the larger tradition of Taoist body-spirit cultivation developed from the traditional Chinese understanding of medicine and the body. According to original texts such as the Kantong Qi, the body is understood as the focus of cosmological processes summarized in the Five Agents, or Wu Xing, the observation and cultivation of which leads the practitioner into greater alignment with the operation of the Tao, the great cosmological principle of everything. Therefore, the traditional view in China is that alchemy focuses mainly on the purification of one's spirit and body in the hopes of gaining immortality through the practice of qigong and or consumption and use of various concoctions known as alchemical medicines or elixirs, each of which having different purposes. Pao Ji Pao Kai cites the pharmacological processing of Chinese materia medica as used in the practice of traditional Chinese medicine, such as honey or wine frying and roasting with toxic metals such as mercury, lead, and arsenic, according to J.C. Cooper's Chinese alchemy, the Taoist quest for immortality, Taoism had two distinct parts, the classical Tao Chia, which was mystical and stemmed primarily from Laozi and Zhuangzi, and the more popular Tao Chao, which was the popular, magical and alchemical side of Taoism. Cooper states that a common viewpoint is that classical Taoism, Taoism was the original but was too austere and rarefied for the general populace. But Tao Chao fulfilled the day to day needs of the people. <laughs> Process and purpose By refining bases into gold, the alchemist believed that immortal life would be delivered if the fake or synthetic gold was ingested. The idea that fake gold was superior to real gold arose because the alchemists believed the combination of a variety of substances and the transformation of these substances through roasting or burning gave the final substance a spiritual value. It possesses a superior essence when compared to natural gold. Cooper, 1990. PG 65. Gold and cinnabar, jindan in Chinese, were the most sought after substances to manipulate and ingest. They were believed to have longevity and could elongate the life of the consumer. Cinnabar is a mineral with a reddish-brown color and is the most common source of mercury in nature. It was used in the search for immortality because of the special significance of its color, and the difficulty with which it was refined. The color of the cinnabar is significant to symbolic belief as well. The color red in Chinese culture is considered to be the zenith of the color representing the sun, fire, royalty and energy." Cooper, 1990. PG-70 cinnabar could also be roasted which produced a liquid form of silver known as quicksilver, which we know to be mercury. This substance was ingested but it could also be combined with sulfur and burned again to return to its natural form of cinnabar. Cinnabar was the yang to Quicksilver's yin. Cooper, 1990. PG 70. In China gold was quite rare, so it was usually imported from other surrounding countries. However, cinnabar could be refined in the mountains of Sichuan and Hunan provinces in central China. Although the majority of xian immortality elixirs were combinations of jindan, many other elixirs were formed by combining metallic bases with natural herbs or animals' by-products. The rhinoceros horn was commonly used in medicines and elixirs and was held to have fertility-increasing abilities. 
Elixirs were composed of metallic compounds such as gold and silver, but they could also be made of more lethal components like arsenic, and sulfur. Eastern versus Western views Both the Eastern practice of alchemy and the later Western practice are remarkably similar in their methods and ultimate purpose. To be sure, the desire to create an elixir of immortality was more appealing to the Taoists, but European alchemists were not averse to seeking out formulas for various longevity-boosting substances. The secret of transmuting one element into another, specifically base metals into gold or silver, was equally explored by both schools for obvious reasons. In the European outlook, the ability to turn relatively worthless materials into gold was attractive enough to allow medieval alchemy to enjoy extensive practice long after the Chinese form had been forgotten. Alternatively, transmutation was also a means of accruing the precious metals that were key in making life extending elixirs, and were otherwise expensive and difficult to obtain. Alchemical knowledge in the East and West favor different opinions of the true form of alchemy due to different theological views and cultural biases, however these disputes do not lessen the integrity of alchemy's canonical nature. Chinese alchemy specifically was consistent in its practice from the beginning, and there was relatively little controversy among its practitioners. Definition amongst alchemists varied only in their medical prescription for the elixir of immortality or perhaps only over their names for it, of which Sinology has counted about 1,000. Because the Chinese approach was through the fundamental doctrine of yin and yang, the influence of the I Ching, and the teachings of the five elements, Chinese alchemy had its roots considerably more in obtaining a higher mental spiritual level. In the West there were conflicts between advocates of herbal and chemical mineral pharmacy, but in China, mineral remedies were always accepted. In Europe there were conflicts between alchemists who favored gold making and those who thought medicine the proper goal, but the Chinese always favored the latter. Since alchemy rarely achieved any of these goals, it was an advantage to the Western alchemist to have the situation obscured, and the art survived in Europe long after Chinese alchemy had simply faded away. Topic. Origins Despite much research, many scholars are still unable to marshal conflicting evidence in order to determine when exactly Chinese alchemy started. It was thought that China was making gold about 1,000 years before Confucius' time, but this is contradicted by other academics stating that during the 5th century BCE there was no word for gold and that it was an unknown metal in China P.G. 21 However, despite the uncertain origins, there are enough similarities in the ideas of practices of Chinese alchemy and the Taoist tradition so that one can conclude that Laozi and Zhang Daling are the creators of this tradition. In her article, Radcliffe tells that Zhang rejected serving the emperor and retreated to live in the mountains. At this time, he met Laozi and together they created or attempted to create the elixir of life Radcliffe, 2001, by creating the theory that would be used in order to achieve the making of such an elixir. This is the starting point to the Chinese tradition of alchemy, whose purpose was to achieve immortality. 
One of the first evidence of Chinese alchemy being openly discussed in history is during the Qin's first emperor's period when Huan Kawan states how modifying forms of nature and ingesting them will bring immortality to the person who drinks them Pregadio, 1995, before Huan Kawan, the idea of alchemy was to turn base metals into gold. Conflicting research on the origins of alchemy are further demonstrated by Cooper, who claims that alchemy flourished well before 144 BCE, for at that date the emperor issued an edict which ordered public execution for anyone found making counterfeit gold. Cooper, 1991. This suggests that people were well aware of how to heat the metals in order to change them into a desired form. A further counter to Pregadio from Cooper is the latter's contention that an emperor in 60 BCE had hired a well-known scholar, Lu Sang, as master of the recipes so that he could make alchemical gold and prolong the emperor's life. All of these conflicting origins considered, it is nearly impossible to claim any absolute knowledge on the origins of Chinese alchemy. Today, if one looks at the teachings in Taoism one can find alchemical practices in these texts. Most of which posit the existence of an elixir or the golden elixir that when ingested gives the drinker eternal life. Since one can make a direct and certain connection between Taoism and Laozi, it is a fair statement to suggest that he played a major role in the creation of Chinese alchemy. Cao Yen is said to have written many of the alchemical books although none of them have ever been found, nor have the existing ones been credited to him PG 22 The likeliest proponents of Chinese alchemy are as previously stated Laozi and Chang Dao Ling as well as Zhuangzi Each of these men are major icons in Taoist teachings Although these 3 are credited with the creation of alchemy there is no definitive proof to suggest or dispute that they were responsible for its creation Topic. Chinese women alchemists With the rise of alchemy in the Chinese civilization, it was seen as an art. Among many practitioners, there were a significant number of women who mastered this art. The earliest recorded woman alchemist had the family name of Fang, Chinese, Fang and she lived about around the 1st century BC. Being raised in a scholarly family who were skilled in the alchemical arts, she was able to have studied alchemy with one of the Emperor Han Wu Tis spouses, and therefore had access to the highest levels of society. Fang was credited with the discovery of how to turn mercury into silver. It was believed that she may have used the technique of silver extraction from ores using mercury, the pure silver residue is left behind from the boiled mercury. Feng's husband, Cheng Wei simplified Chinese, Sheng Wei traditional Chinese, Sheng Wei physically abused her, because he was trying to obtain the secret procedure from Fang, but she refused to give it to him. Fang eventually went insane and killed herself. It was noted that there were detail of Fang's life through the writing of Zhe Hong, an author and alchemist. Moving on to AD 975, Kang Xian Seng is another female figure who, according to the science writing of Wu Shu, mastered the art of the yellow and white alchemy with many other strong transformations, mysterious and incomprehensible." The science writing of Wu Shu also described King as being acquainted with Taoist techniques and could control the spirits. 
Some of the chemical transformation skills that Keng was able to transform was mercury to silver, mercury and snow into silver, probably using the technique of mercury for the extraction of silver from its ores as well as using a primitive type of soxlet process to continuously extract camphor into alcohol some of the other women alchemists that have been recognized in chinese literature are pao ku ko 3rd century ad li shao yun 11th century tai suan nu uncertain sun pu a 12th century and shen yu shu 15th century Topic. Yin and Yang Yin-Yang is an important concept in the ideas of Chinese alchemy. Cooper points out that the idea is pervasive throughout alchemical theory, as the metals were categorized as being male or female, and mercury and sulfur especially were thought to have powers relating to lunar and solar respectively. Davis posits that, prior to the Taoist tradition, the Chinese already had very definitive notions of the natural world, especially involving the five elements, which were water, fire, earth, metal and wood. These were commonly thought to be interchangeable with one another, each were capable of becoming another element. The concept is integral, as the belief in outer alchemy necessitates the belief in natural elements being able to change into others. The cyclical balance of the elements relates to the binary opposition of yin-yang, and so it appears quite frequently. <laughs> outer and inner alchemy Chinese alchemy can be divided into two methods of practice which are widen or external alchemy and niden or internal alchemy. Doctrine can be accessed to describe these methods in greater detail. The majority of Chinese alchemical sources can be found in the Taozang, the Taoist canon. Topic. Outer alchemy widen. The meaning of widen derives from y outside, exterior, and dan referring to alchemical operations, such as the preparation of chemical elixirs, made from cinnabar, realgar, and other substances generally involving mercury, sulfur, lead, and arsenic or else the animal and botanical products which are found in Chinese herbology and traditional Chinese medicine. Widen refers to practices relating to the process of making an elixir often containing herbal or chemical substances found outside of the body. This process involves esoteric oral instructions, building a laboratory, kindling and sustaining the special fires used in the production process, rules of seclusion and purification for the alchemist to follow, and various practices including the performance of ceremonies to protect the self and the ritual area. Widen can also include following a dietary regimen which prescribes or proscribes certain foods. Preparing medicines and elixirs can be referred to as outer practices or widen as these practices occur outside of the body until they are verified by the ingestion of medicines, herbs, and pills to bring about physical changes within the body, separate to the soul. Topic. Inner alchemy Niden. The term Niden can be divided into two parts, nei, meaning inner, and dan, which refers to alchemy, elixir, and cinnabar mercury. Niden uses techniques such as, composed meditation techniques, visualization, breathing and bodily posture exercises. 
Breathing exercises were used to preserve Jing or life essence, and bodily postures were used to improve qi or energy flow in the body. Nidan comprises the elixir from the principles of traditional Chinese medicine and the cultivation of substances already present in the body, in particular the manipulation of three substances in the body known as the three treasures. The three treasures are Jing which can be translated as life essence. A person is born with Jing and it governs the developmental growth processes in the body. Since people are born with a certain amount of Jing, it is taught that a person can increase their Jing through dietary and lifestyle practices. Chai which can be translated as energy or vital energy. Chai energy results from the interaction of yin and yang. A healthy body is constantly circulating chai. Shen can be translated as spirit or mind. Shen is the energy used in mental, spiritual, and creative functioning. Lu, 30. The three treasures are also associated with locations in the body where the alchemical process takes place. These locations include major organs and energy centers, called dantians. Jing or life essence is found in the kidneys and possibly the adrenal glands. Qi or vital energy resides in lower dantian or elixir field, and it is located about an inch down from navel. Shen or Spiritual energy is seated in the middle dantian, which is the heart. Topic: Comparison with yoga. Cooper writes that the aspirant neither renounces life in the world nor is caught up in the realm of the senses essentially reiterating the yin and yang values of balance that Taoism and Chinese alchemy were originally derived from. The name yoga means, yoke. It uses practices that cultivate health of both the psyche and physical body. Drawing on Mircea Iliadi, Cooper states that, Yoga requires perfect discipline of body and mind, the object being to rouse the spiritual powers and to attain realization or immortality. Chinese alchemical yoga depended on exercises, breathing techniques, and an ordered and balanced diet which was designed to increase longevity. The diet was often vegetarian, and some diets removed onion and garlic, others removed grains, and still other removed fish and other meat. Cooper, 109. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Associated risks. When ingested, these compounds did not always result in the desired outcome. Many individuals died or had psychological difficulties after taking certain elixirs. However, the loss of life may not have seemed a large risk, when compared with the promise of the afterlife. Although these elixirs were lethal or dangerous, there is some contention that these individuals were not ignorant of the fatality of some of the materials they were ingesting. There were certain grades of immortality, so if the practiced alchemist died, the level of immortality they achieved was determined by their corpse. If their corpse was sweet-smelling, it was said that they had achieved immortality in an ephemeral state. Likewise, if their corpse disappeared, leaving behind only the clothes, such as in the death of an adept named Ko Hung, this was another form of immortality known as Shi Che Xiun corpse-free immortals Cooper, 14.
Topic: <laughs> Conception of medicine. Medicines can be used to heal ailments on the exterior or interior of the body, to control the aging of the body, or even to prevent death. The term medicine and elixir are virtually interchangeable because of the array of ailments they can influence. The difference between defining an elixir from a medicine was that many medicines were composed mainly of all natural products like herbs and animal products. Never the animals themselves, only their products, which could consist of dung or fur. Although metal compounds are more potent when curing ailments, herbs were used because they were easier to combine and more abundantly available. To make medicines one would use ingredients like, colo nuts, which would be used in famous longevity pills like, fo tt asparagus, which was used because it was known to increase strength, sesame, which prevents senility, and pine which has over 300 different uses, Cooper, 1990. PG, 62 mushrooms were and still are very popular, they are known as the magic fungus. Ganoderma and have thousands of purposes within Chinese alchemy. Topic. See also Alchemy and chemistry in medieval Islam Cold food powder Yellow court classic 